Alright, what is going on, you guys? It's your boy White Album here. Welcome back to some more Tsukihime, a piece of blue glass moon. Last time we left off, uh, well, it wasn't pretty for the girl Arkaway, let's just say. <laughs> Shiki kind of went a little crazy. But um, I did, if if you did see the last video, I did put up my disclaimer. So uh, I think the way I might be doing that is if, uh, let me slightly adjust some things here. There you go. I don't want it too quiet. Um, I think if the if whatever the scene or anything that happens is again, I know this game is a, a little a little bit more uh, graphic compared to its sister game of Witch on the Holy Night. Uh, so depending on what happens in the video, uh, might determine whether or not I put that uh, that disclaimer in the front of the video. So, but uh, you know, only time will tell. Only time will tell. But uh, here we go, man. Here we go. Let's get on with it, shall we? So after, let's see, how long has it been? A minute. So after dismembering Arkaway, uh, he's like, "That was that was not me. Was, I'm not clinically insane." Uh, but here we go. Let's see. Let's see what what are the consequences of his actions. What will we find out today? And this is after uh, Akia kind of chews him out, too. So here we go. This awkward silence is just the worst. There's still some time before Kohaku returns with my breakfast. Until then, I should... 1. Ask about Akia. 2. Ask about Kohaku. 3. Ask about the mansion. Um... You know what? Let's ask about Akia. So, yeah. Ah, I just remembered. You're still a student at Asami, uh, As oh, Asagami, right? Hi. Asagami Jogakuin wa Chungako kara daigakuma de no escalator deskara. That's right. Asagami Girls Academy is an escalator school that spans all the way from middle school to university. Yeah, to university? There, are there schools like that? Maybe more like private schools, I'm assuming. I mean, the school that I went to was a high school, or was a middle school and a high school. But funny enough, uh, this, uh, no, last year they built an elementary school, so now it's like elementary, middle, and high. If they, bro, if they do like a college there, that would be insane. That would be insane. I doubt they do that, though, but, I mean, shit, no, in my school they probably would, but. Asagami Girls Academy is a prestigious in uh, institution located in a prefecture that borders ours. It was founded as a missionary school uh, during the early Meiji era. You can still see the traces of its origins even now. Hold on, uh, uh, Asagami, isn't that the place that um, that Alice went to in uh, Holy Night? That was her school, right? I think they mentioned it like once or twice, but I think they said that, th that she goes there, right? I don't know. During the Showa era, the school was on the verge of financial ruin, but it managed to solve its troubles thanks to the goodwill of a new benefactor. Isn't it a boarding school, though? Why do you make the trip every day? Our father was on close terms with, uh, with Asagami's headmaster. Which allowed for some special consideration. As such, he obtained the headmaster's permission to allow me to commute from the mansion instead. That's not what I meant, though. Akiha you used to stay in the dorms until the old man passed away, didn't you? Isn't the commute like an hour long? Why bother? Well, th that's because. Akia stammers at a few words and averts her gaze. Master Shiki. 
Mistress Aki already Mistress Aki art what what Mistress Aki is already used to already used to spend half the week reciting in the mansion. Commuting to school is a perfectly normal part of a routine. Yeah, but I don't think she understands what he's trying to get at. He's like, why now, now that the old man has passed? I mean, I'm assuming it's because she's now the head of the fucking, the entire Tono estate, so. Might as well just start living there, right? But no, even then, it was... Even if her father was alive... Oh, okay. Interesting. Well, I guess that makes sense because he was, um, training her to become the next head of the family, so... That makes sense as why he would get that special permission to have her commute from the mansion to the school instead of her just staying at the school, you know, full time. Oh, I had no idea. Why the word setup though? I spent half the week here at father's insist insistence. Everything immediately falls into place. Makihisa Tono would never stand for letting Akia have any time to herself, even when she entered middle school. Hmm. Okay. But he's not around anymore. You don't have to force yourself to do that now, do you? You're already busy as is, so adding two hours to your daily commute to that is crazy. Besides, wouldn't you have more fun spending time with your friends in the dorms? Oh, she's gonna be like, I have no friends. Of course, that would be far simpler. And yet, I have responsibilities, you see. As long as incidents such as yesterday's continue to occur, I shall be commuting from the mansion. Such as yesterday's. Yeah, you remember when you were found in a park, my man? <laughs> Soaked from the rain, covered in dirt. You know, that doesn't ring a bell. Was this some sort of financial problem while I was gone? Hey, no mind. The less you know, the better. Yeah, that's a good song. Let's talk about you instead. You seem quite knowledgeable about my school. Do you have some special in interest in Asagami? Yeah, he wants to be a teacher there. But the, I don't know if anybody remembers that that show slash manga Negima. You remember that, where it's like the 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 dude he was like a he was like a wizard. He was a kid, I believe, not like a kid, like a teenager, um, who was the teacher there at an all girls school. I don't know if anybody remembers that. If you remember that, comment that down below. But dude, I oh damn it, shit, how old? like I was pretty young. I don't say young, not like like what's it called, but uh, bro, back like does Verizon still do like? like tv services because i remember we used to have them when i was younger and funimation actually had a channel like their own channel and they would just play like fucking fruits baskets nagima sometimes dragon ball they would play more of like the more not like shonen type of anime not like toonami but again you would see like cowboy bebop there again like fruits basket like original fruits basket too um yeah, there's a lot of fucking anime uh, that they had there. Um, but I remember watching Negima there. I think they had the, what is it, the little hamster there, Hamtaro or Hamtaro or something like that there as well. It was, it was pretty cool that Funimation had their own channel like that. Um, but now you could just, you know, if you have the, the app, you can just sit there and watch it. But I'm pretty sure that like back then they had like a full like channel to themselves where they just played like just anime all day. Um, but it was pretty cool, and uh, yeah, so there was that that was that show Negima, where it was, yeah, he was like a like a teen. I don't know, yeah, like I probably I'm just gonna say it was like 17, 18. And the funny thing is, yeah, he was a teacher or professor at an all girl school, like a, in college, maybe high school. I don't know. But the weird thing was that he was a wizard. I don't know why the wizard thing is the thing that, that catches you off, but it was definitely like one of those like. 
uh, we would call it a suedo harem i don't think it was a harem show but um but it definitely had traces of that but i don't know the, the way she kind of said that just reminded me of negima i don't know but let's, let's get back on track shall we I suppose it's a world that men rarely get a chance to glimpse inside. Yeah, I just know a little bit about it because, you know, you, you go there. Dumbass. <laughs> I asked Keiko about it when you entered middle school. She was the one who told me you went to Asagami. I figured it I figured it wouldn't uh, hurt to learn a little bit more about the school my little sister was attending. It's pretty <clears throat> hold on. All right, we're good. It's pretty... Fuck. <laughs> it's pretty easy to look things up on the internet. Though, it's not like I could just visit the place in real life. So, so Is that why? My apologies. Honestly, I thought... It's not hard to guess why Aki had jumped to conclusions. The school is highly exclusive. And many of the students are said to be gorgeous, not to mention from well uh, from well to do from well to do families. Well to do? What does that mean? I've heard rumors that a family invited its yearly festival. The only one, the the only way for, uh, in for non-students is worth its weight in gold. At least according to the pointless intel that Arihiko lambasted me with. Hi, I'm back with breakfast. Rice porridge with plum shiso and eggs. We're all ready to serve. Okay, not the Western style I thought she was gonna what to call with, but then again, they do have Western style Japanese food over there, so. Kohaku cheerfully pushes the food cart into the room. Well, I guess that's all the time we had to talk today. <laughs> Better chat down quick if I want to make it to school in time. Hmm? Please, you ought to refrain from using such coarse language in the future. Well, coarse language. Cow down? That's coarse language? Okay. Aw, you're back to scolding me again? I liked it better when you were all worried about me. I'd also like you to refrain from spouting since nonsense. Whether you think so or not, I was never worried in the slightest. Akiya turns away from me with a huff. I give Kohaku a fond smile as I pull the bowl of porridge closer and take a spoonful. I also think that the sound design, they're just like in the kitchen, just like fumbling fucking cups and knives and shit. Or not knives, but like utensils to make the sound that it sounds like they're sitting at a table. <laughs> that's funny. I don't know. That's just a funny thought to me. And that's how they do it in movies, so. Have a good day, Master Shiki. Isui accompanies me to the main gate as usual. However, I notice her hesitant stare. I watch as she takes a short breath, like she's struggling to find the right words. Master Shiki, why'd I ask what happened last night? I was nothing really. I feel a little unwell at school yesterday, so I left early. And then on my way home. On my way home. I 
I dropped by the park to catch my breath. But I guess Akio was right that I took the situation too lightly. I'll be more careful from now on. I don't mean to suggest you have done something wrong. Uh, well, technically. <laughs> technically. It's just you seem to be under great strain this morning. Please take care of yourself on uh, please take care on your way to school. He's uh, you see under great strain, he's like, Yeah, I, I was trying to juggle the fact that did I murder somebody or no? <laughs> it must have been hard for her to confront me like this. She sees me off with a deep bow. More and more school uniforms dot the streets as I get closer to the school. At 7.45 a.m., everyone's ambling along, probably because there's still plenty of time left till homeroom. My pace is just as leisurely as that of the other students. I don't have to worry about being late. In fact, I don't have a care in the world. I start my day off like any other. The school gates are just on the other side of, the, of this crossing. The light turns red, so I stop at the curb. I can see the school's perimeter wall, uh, perimeter, perimeter wall across the street. Protected by the guardrails lining the sidewalk, a steady stream of students heads for the gates. There's no one here but Suya High students at this time of day. Or at least, there shouldn't be. And yet, through the rush of the passing guard, cars, I catch, a, I catch a glimpse of white. He's like, oh fuck, no. <laughs> Ah, there she is. What? It's her. Ethereal. White. Undeniable. Golden hair shimmering like the sun. Long, thin eyebrows framing crimson eyes. Their pencil on. <laughs> though I've never seen her once before. No, wait. Though I've only ever seen her once before, I can never mistake her. But this is impossible. Yesterday, I cut her to pieces with my own hands. No. That can't be. That was all just a terrible dream. Hisui, Akia, and Kohaku told me. Nothing of the sort. Fuck, do I need to put that warning back up? Damn, I don't, I don't want to this video, but I guess I might have to. That's simply what I wanted to believe. But it wasn't a dream. It wasn't a hallucination. It was all real. I killed her. I killed her. I killed her. I, without question, killed her. I would have just jaywalked. <laughs> the second I saw her, jaywalking. I don't give it. Like, I know they punish jaywalking very heavily over there in Japan. I'll take the risk. But if I did, then why? Why is she here? Right here. Right in front of my eyes. The traffic light turns green. The students surrounding me start to cross the street. I'm the only one who hangs behind, standing motionless on my side of the road. She sits down the guard on the guardrail, casually swinging her legs back and forth. She's got Arcoway's got some crazy ass balance to sit on a guardrail. That I'm pretty sure she's like 50% legs as well. <laughs> it's almost it almost seems like she's waiting for something. Or rather, someone. I have no way of telling how long she's been waiting, but her expression is relaxed and unassuming. Is she really waiting for someone? Her restless movements betray any nervous excitement, as if she were waiting on a lover. Hold on. She's waiting. Who is she waiting for? Isn't it obvious? <laughs> Isn't it incredibly obvious? I'd do the same thing. Anyone would. 
If I were killed by someone and miraculously came back to normal, if I could, I'd go straight after the person who did it. I've got a terrible feeling about this. Yeah, just ignore her, bro. Just just do the just do like the you walk past her but you do the hand thing and you look away, you just don't look at her eyes. <laughs> just like, oh, oh, oh. Just oh, oh, oh she, did she see me? Tell a random shit, did she see me? Like, who saw you? Who are you talk I don't know you, man. A chill crawls up uh crawls its way up my back like a centipede. It feels as though as my spine wants to burst through my mouth. Uh oh. She sees him. The woman in white looks my way. Our eyes meet. We're thinking the same thing. Everything is exactly what I was afraid of. No. This was all just a coincidence. It has to be. There's no reason to feel like this. We've never met. No connection exists between the two of us. Well, not for long. She's just a, well, she's just a stranger that looks like her. She's got to be waiting for someone else. The only, the only other explanation is that this moment I'm experiencing, that the moment, what? That this moment I'm experiencing is a nightmare. If it weren't, then there'd be no way a dead person could be alive and walking around. Not that, not after being dismembered like that. So why? Why is she looking at me with that wicked smile on her face? If that's wicked, I don't want to, I don't know what, oh, there it is. <laughs> I was like, uh, I don't, I was like, what the fuck? If that's a, if that's a wicked grin, dude, I don't know what her evil smile looks like. I don't want to know what it looks like, but here we go. That satisfying grin of someone who just spotted their killer. As if to say, I've been waiting for you. The woman pushes herself off the guardrail and raises her hand in greeting. She's got a sharp chin. She lightly brushes her hair back as she turns to face me. What the hell? It's just a bad dream. The traffic light blinks red. And now you're late for school. Don't. Don't come any closer. Don't. The woman waltzes through the oncoming traffic without it even flinching once. That's... Whoa, okay. She's less than three meters away now. I don't know whether this is a dream or reality. He's going mental. He's going mental. I mean, to be fair, yeah, I would too. I told you. Don't come any closer. I shout at her. But it changes nothing. I've got to escape. I've got to get away from the woman in white. I run. I run with all my might. Without a shred of shame or concern for my reputation, I run. Pushing and shoving my way through passerby as my feet strike the pavement. <laughs> my breath grows ragged and my heart pounds and screams for me to stop. But I can't stop running. My face look unre my face must look unrecognizable, etched with such exhaustion and pain. My vision gets distorted by the tears stinging my eyes. My throat burns. My lungs squeeze and twist to ring out uh, ring out my breath. I'm shaking uncontrollably. It feels like the tendons in my hands might tear from the convulsions. My feet hit my feet hit the ground haphazardly, legs moving without the time to think where they land. Each step sends a numbing shock up my thighs. That's fine. Even if my legs tear themselves to shreds, that's fine. Just, if I stop running here, I might lose my mind. I think it's a wolf. <laughs> oh shit. She's gone. I look over my shoulder. I can see the woman in white casually coming my way. Oh no, she's doing the Michael Myers walk. Doesn't matter how fast you're running, he's always behind you somehow. <laughs> I've always loved those videos where it's like, um, it's like, you know, like I just said, you're running, but you see Michael Myers, he's just walking normally. But then it'll be like the video, like the Vine or the that damn show my age or their Vine or TikTok. It's like uh it's like when Michael Myers is not when you're not looking at him, he's just he's just sprinting. <laughs> I like the idea that that's exactly what she's doing. But considering who she is, she probably doesn't really need to put much effort. All doubt vanishes from my mind. She's following me. The woman I killed is following me. That alone is plenty of reason for me to lose my mind. My heart feels like it might explode, but I ignore it and keep running. 
Whenever I look around, she's still there. Sauntering behind me, as if she were taking a simple stroll, while I keep fleeing with all my might. I tilt my head to the skies. My arms feel heavy. All sensation has long abandoned my legs. I'm running faster than I've ever have in my life. So why can't I shake her? Why can't I outrun her, uh, outrun her leisurely pace? I'm completely out of breath. I don't even know how many kilometers I've run at full speed. Well, he should have run straight to school, dog. I think that would have been the most safe option. Well, no, she was in front of him. Never mind. <laughs> and she's still behind me. Walking. With all the effort of someone out for a stroll. But she never fails to lag behind. Like the image of a ghost seared into my uh, proverbial real, uh, rear view mirror. Oh fuck. Oh no, he's going mental. There's nothing funny about this situation, but I can't help but laugh. A stream of laughter burst out. I keep running. My body screams that it might collapse and die if I continue, but still, I keep running. It's clear why I have to run. The second she catches me, she'll kill me. I don't have any uh, bias for thinking that, but I know better than anyone that if I'd be fooling myself if I try to laugh it off. I don't need reasons or evidence. It's just how the world works, to reap what I've sown. An eye for an eye, a life for a life. Since I killed her, she, ha she now has the right to kill me. It's as simple as that. It's a simple, it's a simple fact that my life will end the second I get caught. Oh, this is a familiar place. I fall, sprawling pathetically on the ground. I didn't even stumble or trip. My legs just couldn't carry me a single step further. Oh, this is this. <laughs> oh, just broken glass <laughs> in his hands. I crawl across the ground to the wall. With my palms against the stone, I will myself to get back up on my feet, but it's no use. The second I lift myself up off the ground, my knees give out, and I fall back down with a thud. I can no longer remove my body, not even an inch. I throw my head back backwards, and wheeze for air. It hurts. I can't get enough oxygen at all, I wonder why. My brain is starving. I can't think. I can't make sense of what I'm doing. Why am I doing this? Why? How? Is the woman I kill still alive? I cut her down perfectly. Thoroughly. I massacred her in the most extreme way possible. So how could she be waiting outside of my school? How could she just sit there and smile at me when I arrived? I killed her. I definitely killed her. That's right. I definitely killed her. I definitely killed her. And yeah, okay, drink. Uh, okay, game, real quick. Uh, take a shot for every time I said the word "killed" or right, in this damn video, bro. Like, come on. <laughs> like, dog, you're gonna lose your liver if they keep saying the word "kill" or "killed." <laughs> I there it is. I definitely killed her, and yet, why? 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 Are huh? Are we finished playing tag already? The sound of footsteps coming closer. A subdued noise that echoes through the hall, through the hallway, through the alley. The woman shrugs her shoulders as if disappointed and speaks to me as I lay as I lie slumped at the against the wall. Konnichiwa. Hello again. I must thank you for taking care of me yesterday. Not the a greeting I would expect. She faces me with a carefree smile. Okay, uh, I will say this is the part that I got up to when I played it, when I played the emulation, 
are the fan translation of Tsukihime. So after this, it's it's brand new to me. I have no clue what's going to happen next. So this is literally this is I don't know if this is the exact same scene, but it's this general like I guess yeah, and within this scene is where I last left off or where I last stopped playing was when she met him in the alleyway. So after this scene, it's completely going to be brand new to me. So here we go. I feel like I'm going crazy. I don't know what to make. I don't know what to make of her expression. Still wearing that smile, she brazenly enters the closed-off alleyway. Oh, he forgot this. Rather sloppy of you to leave something so incriminating behind. A black object lands in front of me with a light thud. My bag. I haven't noticed I lost it. I, I've noticed that I've lost it yet. No, hold on. What did she just say? Incriminating. Did she just say incriminating? Shit. I've got to get out of here. I don't know why that made me laugh, but I did. I urge my legs to move. I want to push back, uh, push my back for, uh, harder into the concrete, uh, concrete wall blocking my way. Huh? I thought we were done with tag. With tag. This is a dead end alleyway. Besides, it's not like anyone else is around to get in our way. I don't know. What about that homeless girl we saw? The woman looks oddly cheerful. A dead end? With no one around? Oh, fuck. I look around in a panic, then I curse myself for stupid for my stupidity. Why the hell did I decide to flee, uh, flee here, of all places? It's like I'm begging to be killed. Huh, that sure took a while. Eighteen hours, but I finally caught you. The woman takes another step towards me. What? You? What? Yes. You're supposed to be. Dead? Yes. You did kill me yesterday. I'm so happy you remembered. It's a response I've least wanted to hear, regardless of whether this is real or not. Bullshit! Dead people just don't walk around! Well, sure, but do you really need to be this surprised? I just revived after you killed me. That's all. She says that so casually. <laughs> the woman says it as if it's nothing, coming ever closer. The space between us shrinks steadily. You... revived? I sit in a daze as I digest what she just told me. She came back to life. Does she mean she came back from the brink of death? What? Did she go to a doctor and undergo an operation to bring herself back? <laughs> Don't screw with me! There's no human on earth who could come back from being chopped into pieces like that. Yeah. Well, good thing I'm not human then. What? Her words are too simple to interpret any other way. I'm not human. That's what that woman just told me. You're not human? Obviously. 
What kind of human manages to regenerate all by her lo by her lonesome after being cut to pieces? You know what just the, the thought that came to my mind? You know those little like um toys? Like it's like a little puppet, but when you press the button at the bottom they just collapse. But when you let go of the button, they just like reassemble themselves. That just popped into my head when she said that she that she regenerated all by herself. That's like the funniest thing to me. <laughs> I don't know why, that's just a funny thought. No human could. That much is a fact. If someone could, they might look human, but no way they'd be considered the same anymore. Someone who can die and come back to life. A being that does not care if it ceases to breathe. One thing, uh, one thing that can fully, uh, that, what? One that can fu uh, fully recover, I'm just gonna say that. Even after being cut to pieces. Something that may look human, but definitely can't be called one. I mean, does her red eyes not give her away? I mean, come on. If I saw someone with red eyes, I'd be like, you're not human. There's something with you, and I don't like it. It appears that the true form of the woman in front of me. I try to laugh at the situation, but my throat is too wrecked to let out any or to let any sound through. What is this? It isn't it isn't funny enough to be a joke? And even if it were a joke, it all fits together a little too well. I mean, she's got a point. If she isn't human, then can it actually be possible for her to come back to life even after being massacred in such a way? <laughs> I mean, to be fair, dude, you, you can see lines that nobody else can see, so... A little bit of something that's a little bit supernatural shouldn't be out of the question, you know? My mind finally starts to settle down. I recall the words of the one who saved me long ago. First, I need to take a good look. Then, I need to think of everything through. That's the type of situation I'm in right now. <laughs> if you say you're not human... <laughs> then what the hell are you? Me? Well, we're usually called vampires. To put it simply, I'm a monster that drinks the blood of people. That's much better. Well, I don't know if I would say that, but sure. Her being a vampire makes all this easier to understand. Even if I know what a vampire is, they may just be stuff of legends, but I doubt there's anyone out there who, is, who hasn't heard of them. Graham Stroker. St Stroker? Damn, okay, hold on. Well, my mind's in the gutter. <laughs> I read that wrong. That was all my fault there. Bram Stoker wrote a famous book about them once. In Western fiction, they're often described as undying monsters in human form. Sometimes, they're also described as bloodsuckers, which is what they are in a nutshell. They're just big-ass mosquitoes that just look like people. <laughs> they're monsters that drink blood, so of course they're not human. What the hell? What would that? What would make mosquitoes then? They drink blood. Well, I mean, to be fair, I guess mosquitoes are little fucking assholes. I guess. <laughs> uh, being someone from Florida, I, I fucking hate mosquitoes, and it doesn't help that we're in the middle of summer, so they're definitely more prevalent here. Right, a vampire. It sounds so ridiculous. Just saying it out loud. Uh, nearly makes me burst into a mad laugh. I'm gonna get killed any moment now. Yet, I feel incredibly calm about it. What can I say? I just don't have the energy to care anymore. Not that it would do any good. She, seem, she, what, she seems satisfied as she peers down at me, at my pathetic figure. Wait. I thought vampires weren't able to walk around in broad daylight. She's a daywalker. At the boy blade. No, never mind. That's really not something for me to be focused on right now. So. What business does a monster have with me? I blurt out the words in a fit of frustration. The woman looks at taken back for a moment. She crosses her arms in front of her chest, looking over me with a small pout. 
Seriously? You already forgotten what you did to me yesterday? You killed me, a complete stranger, in such a barbaric way before we even exchanged a single word. And now you're asking me what business I have with you? You must be awfully used to murdering people. He looks more baffled than angry. But I could care but I could say but, but I could say I'm equally baffled. I mean, the woman I killed with my own two hands is standing in front of me, grumbling that I have the gall to kill her. Hey, are you even listening, you homicidal maniac? I'm listening, I'm listening. I just need a second to process how I could possibly, th uh, possibly be this unlucky. So sorry, but can you be quiet for one second? Damn, okay. I need something to blame. Otherwise, I'll end up destroying myself. I've learned just how bad my luck is, though it's a little late for it. For whatever reason, I was overcome by the urge to kill this woman. So I wrote the urge to like finish the job. Everything I recall is fuzzy, so I convinced myself that it was just a dream, but it wasn't. And the person I killed wasn't even human. I kind of accept that I'm strange and defective, but to compare it to, well, all of this, I'm actually on the normal side. Well, I don't know if murdering someone is considered normal, but uh, okay. You just, she just so happens to be a vampire that can regenerate herself, so, you know. Hey, you know, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta weigh the, the, the odds there. <laughs> I break out in laughter. But it's, all not, but it's not all bad news. If the woman I killed really has come back to life, that means I haven't killed anyone. Well, that's one way of thinking about it. I'm gonna perform this act of killing, yet yeah, she's still alive, and uh, she's still alive and well. At the very least, that's something for me to take comfort in. He's like, oh, oh, dude. Oh, you came back to life, thank thank God. I thought I murdered you. She's like, well, technically you did, but <laughs> you, you kind of did, but either way. That's right. If I didn't kill anyone, then everything might be fine. Shiki Tono can actually go back to his normal day-to-day -day life. Sure, whatever. In exchange for that, I'm not being hunted down by a deranged lunatic. That's still better than being a murderer. It's still a case of bad luck, but it's bad luck at the very best, uh, the very best, uh, the very best kind. Though the whole situation might be ridiculous, at least I'm not the only one who's crazy. All right, I've calmed down a bit. You got something to say to me, right? Air it all out then. He's like, you know. Oh, I have plenty I'd like to tell you. But you sure are a strange guy. What's with the attitude when you're face to face with a vampire? Look, I know it's bad, but I'm doing everything just to keep it just to keep it together. Otherwise, I probably would have killed myself twice over by now. He like fucking has the knife. He's like he's about to do it, and she's like, nah, 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 nah. she's like grabs his hand with like two fingers, because she's just fucking incredibly powerful. She's just like holding him back with two fingers. He's like, nah, nah. <laughs> she's like, no, no, we, we gotta talk. We gotta talk. <laughs> if she's gonna kill me, I wish she'd just get it over with. I've already dealt with my body giving out for me for seven years now. No matter how terrible the act, I prepare to recognize that it really happened. Then again, never in my wildest dreams did I ever think I'd have to deal with a situation like this in the first place. The woman gives me a drawn out look. Her gaze is sharp, but I don't sense any hostility. This is also backwards. Isn't it natural to want an eye for an eye? Shouldn't she should be itching to pay me back? What? 
Why are you staring at me like that? You came to get your revenge, right? So just... You're right. I don't want to kill you for what you did to me. If that's what you want me to do, I'll happily oblige. But otherwise, I'll have to pass. It's just not worth it. Her eyes are firmly fixated on me. Tell me, do you regret it? What? My eyes widened in surprise. Her words just sounded so out of place. I asked whether you regret killing me. If you feel remorse over it, then I might just have it in my heart to forgive you. You seem like you'd be pretty bad at lying. For a human, anyway. Do I... Regret it? Yeah, if you're willing to give me an apology from the bottom of your heart, I'm good with that. I can't believe it. And not just the part where my murder victim is telling me she'll forgive me. I can't believe how amazingly gentle she sounds. Come on, an honest question deserves an honest answer. Hurry up, tell me. Do you regret it or not? We can't continue this conversation unless you answer. Do I regret it? That goes without saying. I. I try to speak, but something holds me back. You can't. If you say something now, you won't be able to continue living in ignorant bliss. Keep pretending this was a dream. Keep pretending you didn't notice. Keep pretending to be normal, it tells me. You what? My throat tightens. The fear begs me to not speak. But... But I can't run from this. It's something I have to face. I think someone who believed in me told me something similar once. If you want to truly, if you truly want to live a normal life, then face your own sins, face your own actions. Never, ever look away. Of course, I regret what I did. I mean, I killed someone. I read my confession from my chest. As soon as the first words spill out my lips, there's no stopping them. I finally accepted my own failings. I killed this woman. I killed her with no mercy, for no reason. For my own gratification. I'm sorry that I did it. I'm sorry for everything. And if you let me. If I can be permitted such a cheap gesture, gesture, then I'd apologize a thousand times over. But there wouldn't be any point. I can never change what I did to you. So, what I did was unforgivable. That she was, uh, that she was somehow resurrected is no excuse. Jiggy Tono murdered the very woman he sees before her, or before him, <laughs> not her. <laughs> I am guilty of a violation of the highest order, an act of unfathomable violence. So if you want revenge, I won't stop you.
俺自身の行為から逃げていただけだった I wasn't running because I was scared of you I was running because I was scared of what I've done Slumped against the alley wall I confess my sins to the empty air It is as if I it's fuck it's as if I finally woken up I spent the past I spent the past day in a in a what in a in a what in a sure in a fragile transient dream in a brief refuge from the reality of my own depravity but now at last it is time to pay the piper Hmm. I see. You're a good person then. What? I look up at her in surprise. She's smiling. She might call herself a vampire, but her expression is pretty sweet and honest, or perfectly sweet and honest. Okay. I'll have you help me out. Huh? Huh? Her smile is different now. More meaningful, less innocent. Help? She wants me to help her. Oi, tetsudaite nanda? Hold on. What do you mean by that? Dakara, anata o yurushite ageru daisho. Call it compensation for me for giving you. I'll need help. I need some help killing the vampire that's taken up residence in this town. And just like that, Shiki Tono became a vampire slayer. <laughs> He's like, huh? I don't understand any of this. Wait. Compensation? You're saying you'll forgive me just like that? What do you mean, killing the vampire? Didn't you just say you were a vampire? Ah, uh, you've got it all wrong. I'm a vampire too, yeah. But vam the vampire I'm talking about isn't me, obviously. You live here, right? Then you must have heard about the recent serial killings. Imagine killing someone, they come back, and then they hire you to kill someone else. That's insane, dog. <laughs> That's insane to think about. That'd be a crazy movie plot. I mean, it's already happening in the game, but maybe without the love interest part that we'll get down to, you know, down the line. Uh, well, I guess. The sudden callback to the familiar news story snaps me out of my worked-up state. Somehow, the strange circumstances around those murders seem more real than whatever is happening to me here. I heard the killer already killed a whole bunch of victims, and that they had their bodies drained of... blood. The moment I say it, I suddenly realize that the woman is where the uh, what the woman is getting at. A very simple conclusion. That's the vampire I'm talking about. You ramble about me killing, uh, me killing you, but the one I really want to kill is that vampire. That serial killer is an enemy of your kind too, right? My mind is running circles trying to keep up with the influx of new data. Sure, I get the basics. I understand what she's saying. But on some fundamental uh, level, I feel all common sense as well and truly felt let the building. Seriously, humans are so inefficient. Well, 
You all grumble about this, uh, about how this must be the work of a vampire, but I don't see anyone actually going out to kill it. You're like a bunch of squirrels, too afraid to run from a forest fire. Uh, well, to be fair, said vampire is in and out like a normal serial killer would be, so. And it also happens at night, usually when vampires attack, so usually the bodies are not found until, like, a couple hours later, so. <laughs> yeah, not the well, to be fair, vampires are not supposed to exist. Hmm. Dissatisfaction with my response. Or dissatisfied dissatisfaction. Dissatisfied with my response. Her lips purse into a pout. Right. The mysterious creature in front of me uh, did just say she was a vampire as well. So, what then? You came to this town to take care of the vampire serial killer for us. And you want me, of all people, to somehow help you. Right. I was here to kill the vampire, but someone came along to ruin those plans. Yesterday, some total stranger barged into my place and murdered me for absolutely no reason. Talk about rotten luck. I walked into a perfect ambush and got chopped into 17 pieces before I had a chance to fight back. How does she know that was perfectly 17 pieces? Did she count herself? That was she just sitting there in a whole pool of blood while he was like hyperventilating and having a fucking anxiety attack? And she's just like, well, that's perfectly 17 piece, uh, seventeen cut pieces of me. <laughs> also makes me wonder how fast she can regenerate. Is it like an instant thing? Is it like instantaneous or is it like a, a slow day's process? Well, no. Yeah, like a slow day's process. Again, it's like the little toy that just like, what's it called? <laughs> What kind of person stalks someone they've never met before, kills them, and then leaves uh, uh, feeling all satisfied? Isn't that terrible? Cruel, even? He must have been one hell of a ruthless murderer. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. That's pretty much what I was like yesterday. As much as I'll to refute her, I'm fresh out of ammunition. Honestly, was planning on killing you at first. It was all I could think of when I was restoring my body. I've never been so humiliated. Even worse, it took me over 80% of my power to come back to life. See, if it was Shaggy, that would have been 1% of power. Okay, forgive me for that outdated reference. <laughs> you know what's the worst part of it? It really hurts. It hurts so much I thought I'd lose my mind. But then it would hurt so bad that it snapped me back to reality. Do you know, do you have any idea what it's like to spend an entire night teetering back and forth between, between two types of pain that extreme? I'm sorry, but as a human, I don't think I ever could, uh, I could even begin to imagine what that was like. Well, to be fair, if you were a human, you'd be dead, so... That hate kept me going as I searched for you. I even forgot all about the vampire I was supposed to be hunting. With your uniform as my only lead, I did some sniffing around until I figured out which school you went to. That was about two hours ago. Well, 
それじゃあってあそこで待つことにしたの I considered waiting till nightfall to catch you, but I didn't want to drag it out a second longer, so I just decided to wait out there. That's why she was waiting for me outside of school. After all that agony, she must have been dying to kill me. If that's the case. I don't get it. Why forgive me if you weren't if you were that angry? Hmm, good question. Hmm, I guess I had enough time to cool my head. I used so much of my power already. I figured it'd be more efficient to keep you around as a makeshift meat shield instead of giving you a squishy squashy death. Sorry, did you just say something horrifying? Hmm, did I? You said you wanted, you wanted to use me as your meat shield. She also added some pretty unfortunate adjectives to her description. Isn't that the obvious course of action, though? I may have forgiven you, but that's just the emotional stuff. You still committed an act of murder. That has nothing to do with feelings. The only way to atone is through actions. Got that? You make it sound obvious, but it's not. I expected her just to kill, just to kill me instead. But being asked to be her shield feels like a totally different kind of compensation. I can't exactly pinpoint what the difference is, but I damn. But I'm damn sure. What? But I damn sure have a bad feeling about this. I can't tell if you're being sincere or if you're just messing with me. Just to be clear, you did kill me. I know you can't even fathom it. But it takes a lot of strength to revive after that kind of mess. It would have been... It wouldn't have been such a big deal if you just killed me the normal way. There's a normal way? Although the classic wooden stake through the heart? But I've never seen cuts like that. I couldn't even get my wounds to reattach, so I had to rebuild my whole body from scratch. Because of that, it took nearly every ounce of strength I had to come back to life. She puffs out her, uh, she puffs over her cheeks in anger. It's rather comical, but oddly fitting. I guess she forgot about her anger up until now, but they, uh, but they, uh, but explaining the situation is making her relive her fury. So right now, I'm weak. She may be weak, but she'll still fuck you up. I'll be fine after a couple of nights of rest. But if I'm attacked during that time, I won't be able to lift a hand to stop them. So that's why you'll be my shield. Says you. Don't I get any input? Not really. You did murder her. Well, to be fair, this is all your fault to begin with, so it's only logical that you help me out. Are you telling me you don't actually regret your actions after all? I'm trapped by her sincere gaze. She's so unfair. All this talk about regret, or the courses of action aside, I'd really rather she didn't look at me with those eyes. Hey, stop looking at me with them big old eyes. <laughs> if you're calling yourself a mo uh, if you're what if you're calling yourself a monstrous vampire, you really shouldn't be going around staring people down with such pure, honest eyes. What? Oh. Ah, 
You? I clamp down on the feelings rising in my chest. I regret my actions. I want to atone for them too. Yet, my heart keeps warning me that, as a human, I should be not teaming up with this woman. I... Without an answer at hand, I idly raise my gaze. Huh? In that moment, I could see a different pair of eyes glowing staring back at me. My entire body tenses up again. Strength returns to my overtaxed legs and I force myself up from my seated position into a crouch. The woman following my gaze turns to look at what has appeared in the entrance of the alleyway. Behind her. The fucking panther. What the hell? Is a creature even more out of place in a human city than the vampire in front of me? The woman looks perfectly calm, but I'm struggling to wrap my head around the situation. That's a panther. I know that much. Even a child would be able to tell what animal it is. But you wouldn't see one outside of a picture book or a cage in a zoo. And somehow, here I am. Experiencing just how terrifying the beast is firsthand, all without anything to protect me. It stands on four lean, powerful limbs, muscle that seems as supple as rubber, rubber, yet hard as steel. Its form is far, for, uh, far removed from that of a human being. This is a creature built for the sole purpose of hunting its prey. Simply seeing it awakens primal instincts that should have been cast away in, a, in the Stone Age. We might be both living creatures, but this panther is in another league. Its superior abilities leaves me breathless. It's not something I could put into words. No, oh, excuse me. This creature and I cannot coexist in the same world, much less communicate with one another. Well, technically they do coexist in the world. Just one lives in like, I don't know, like the fucking Serengeti. And you live in the city, so... <laughs> you know. The Black Panther's body... What? Oh, never mind. I was gonna do the Wakanda pose. I was like, eh, just refrain me from doing that. <laughs> let, me, let me not do that. Let me not do that. I'll say it, but I won't do it. The Black Panther's body measures uh, over one meter in length. Even a dog that size could easily take down a human. And here it is. I and me. And the woman in white. Vicious. A vicious claws fangs and all we're barely five meters between us better start climbing that damn wall man hey is that a friend of yours what the hell do you think i can't help but snap back at so, uh, something so crazy i'm an idiot as if taking my voice as a signal the panther leaps in our direction no that's not right it's running but it's going so fast, I thought it leaped at us instead. I can't do anything. The Black Blur's fangs will sink into my shoulder before I even have the time to process its movements. I can see it. I'm keenly aware of how this will end, one second from now. But the thought of dodging or moving away doesn't seem to register. But the blow comes from my side instead. The woman in white shoves me away before the shadowy creature has the chance to bite me. An effortless swipe at her, of her hand is all it takes. At her touch, I'm flung across the alley as easily as someone might throw a ball, and I go crashing into the wall. I had that rhymed. He's like, oh, oh, fuck my back. I grip my teeth as I slam into the wall back first, shoot pains up through my spine. What are you? Not now, look straight. The woman shouts at me. I look up, expecting the beast to have crashed into the wall behind me, but instead, having lost sight of its target, the panther reacts instantly by spinning itself into the air and planting its feet onto the wall. From there, it leaps to the opposite wall. What the fuck? This, this thing is just jumping from wall to wall? What the hell? Like a ninja? That's insane. The creature latches itself to the side of the building. That's crazy to see. Just as it seems to have found its footing, it turns its glowing gaze at me once more. My breath is caught after the chaos. The panther pushes off against the wall and leaps at me like lightning falling from the sky. The woman places her hand in front of its trajectory, deflecting the oncoming bolts with a single hand. 
She's even faster than the panther. Her slender frame even more graceful. It's frightening. Unnerving, even. Hey, now. Can't you see I was here first? I'll have to kill you if you don't mind your manners, you know. The woman's disposition hasn't changed at all. As if heeding her threat, the panther cautiously backs away. There's around three meters of space between the, between the two of them now. The panther keeps his distance. They must have realized the, di the difference in their abilities during their brief clash. To a human, that panther is no doubt a monster. A beast that could easily slay any enemy or any human it meets. An enemy too. But that woman is on a whole other level. A monster among monsters. A demon that could easily slay any monster it meets. The panther sits absolutely still as it observes the woman. Even I could tell how badly I classed it is. The woman must have seemed more like in, insurmountable. Uh, like what? The woman must seem like some insurmountable wall when viewed from the eyes of an apex predator. If you got business with me, I'll deal with you. I'll deal with you later. So for now, the atmosphere around the woman changes. The panther hadn't rattled her in the slightest. But the very air around her seems sharper than before. People? There's no mistaking it. A group of strangers is making their way down the alley. They're walking at a leisurely pace through the dimly lit back street, ambling right in our direction. Stop! Get away from here! There's a panther on the... I try to tell them a panther's on the loose. But as I do... Red currents flash across my vision. And with that, we're going to have to find out who these people are. I think we can pretty much guess who they are. They're zombies. <laughs> but there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That's going to be it for today's episode of Tsukihime, A Piece of Blue Glass Moon. Uh, so yeah, um, yeah. so basically after that part, uh, I basically stopped just before the panther shows up, so I actually had no clue a fucking panther was going to show up, too. So, basically, yeah, this was basically the area I got that I stopped playing on, on Ryujinx, uh, the fan translation of Tsukihime. Again, because uh, it was just bad sound quality, so I, it really distracted me from the rest of the story. But, um, so yeah, man, everything else after that, or after this, is just completely brand new, and I'm hyped for it. I'm hyped for it, ladies and gentlemen. I'm hyped for it. But uh, if you guys did enjoy today's video, like, comment, and subscribe. It is your boy, White Album. I will see you guys next time.